You have noted my lamentation. Put my tears into your bottle. Are they not recorded in your book? Whenever I call upon you, my enemies will be put to flight. This I know, for God is on my side. In God, the Lord, whose word I praise, in God I trust and will not be afraid. For what can mortals do to me? I am bound by the vow I made to you, O God. I will present to you thank offerings, for you have rescued my soul from death and my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before God in the light of the living. Today, we remember Henry Martin, priest and missionary to India and Persia. Translator of the scriptures and prayer book into Hindi and Persian, Henry Martin, an English missionary in India, died in Armenia when he was 31 years old. Though his life was brief, it was a remarkable one. Like most English clergy of the time, he was educated at one of the two ancient universities, Cambridge in his case. He had intended to become a lawyer, but Charles Simeon, the notable evangelical rector of Holy Trinity, Cambridge, inspired him to go to India as a missionary. After serving as Simeon's curate for a short time, Martin traveled to Calcutta in 1806 as chaplain of the East India Company. During his five years in India, Martin preached the gospel, organized private schools, and founded churches. In addition to his work as a missionary, Martin translated the New Testament and the Book of Common Prayer into Hindi, a valuable missionary aid to the young Anglican Church in India. He also began the study of Persian and translated the New Testament into Persian. Martin longed to go to Persia. In 1811, his persistence brought him to Shirmas to become the first English clergyman in that city. He engaged in theological discussions with learned Muslims and had time to correct his Persian translations. Obviously gifted with a remarkable facility for languages, Martin hoped eventually to visit Arabia and to translate the New Testament into Arabic. While on his way to Constantinople in 1812, however, he died in the city of Tokat. The Armenians of the city recognized his greatness and buried him with the honors usually accorded to one of their own bishops. Very soon afterwards, his life of energetic devotion and remarkable accomplishment became widely known. He is remembered as one of the founders of the modern Christian church in India and Iran. On February 11th in 1813, the Reverend Charles Simeon, Martin's mentor, wrote a letter to Charles Grant, chairman of the East India Company. My dear sir, grieved I am to communicate to you the most distressing intelligence of Mr. Henry Martin's death in Tokat in Asia Minor. On his way, either to Constantinople or to Aleppo, his papers and property are secured. He had set out from Tabriz on the 1st of September, much too soon for the state in which he had been, and died about the 16th of October. But whether from the heat and fatigue of traveling or from the plague, which was raging there, is uncertain. Just what words can express the loss which India and the whole world has sustained? Let us pray. O God of the nations, you gave your faithful servant, Henry Martin, a brilliant mind, 
a loving heart, and a gift for languages, that he might translate the scriptures and other holy writings for the peoples of India and Persia. Inspire in us a love like his, eager to commit both life and talents to you, who gave them, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen.